Chapter 6 is the beginning of the section of vectors. So this is a completely different topic from calculus. Um, it used to be a separate course and now they put the two of them together so you get a little bit of both before you go to university. So what I want to do is I thought I would start with 6.1 introduction to vectors to see how many people we're watching vectors now instead of calculus because it's hard for me to do both of them at the same time. But I've gotten far enough ahead with the calculus so if there's enough people who watch the vectors lesson then I will continue with that and go back to calculus a little bit later. So when we talk about vectors we talk about different ways of measuring things to start with. So we talk about scalar measurements and we talked about talk about vector measurements. So the difference between the two is that a scalar has magnitude, magnitude, or just magnitude, and a vector has magnitude and direction. So things that have just magnitude would be something like your age. I'm 63 years old. Oof. Or the mass of something or your speed or the temperature outside or inside or of your body your temperature those just are scalars what makes a vector would be something like weight because it is that's kind of a tricky one because there is the influence of gravity, so we have direction with weight that you don't have with mass. And velocity, when you're describing winds, you'd say the wind is 30 kilometers. Let's just write something here. Wind 30 kilometers from the northeast. So it has magnitude and direction. When we represent vectors, when they're just drawn on a piece of paper. So there's two different types. There's the type that you just do um, geometric vectors, I believe they're called geometric, and the other one is um, Cartesian plane vectors. So geometric vectors and algebraic. So this would be a geometric, these two, geometric vectors. So they're on just, I write it like this. So if I drew a vector like this, I could say, well, this is my vector. How do you like it? And you'd say, this is the tail of your vector, because that's where it started from. And the arrow, where the arrow is, that is the head of your vector. So that gives it direction. And the magnitude of it would be, well, depends on how far I want to make this scale. So let's say this was 100 kilometers and this is going to be 200 kilometers, and then I would need a direction for it. So the direction the vector points represent the direction it's moving. So you can think of it like winds blowing. So I can have a whole bunch of vectors that have the same magnitude and direction as this. If I do another one over here, I could draw another one here, I could draw another one. I can draw them all over the paper if I wanted to. It's like the wind blowing. It's not just in one spot. It's, it could be anywhere as long as it has the same magnitude and direction. If you have a vector going this way and you have another one of equal magnitude going in the opposite direction, these are called opposite vectors. So what makes them opposite is that they have the same magnitude so it says same magnitude, so it's the same length if I measured it, same magnitude but opposite direction. Opposite direction. So you, if this was vector C, and vectors you put a little hat over it like this, this would be negative C. And we'll do some more of that in a second here as well. Okay, so the other thing is, how do we label a vector? So if I have a vector here, now this isn't a coordinate plane, this is just directions for you, because you have to have a direction to your vector. So if I have this AB from A to B here, 
This is vector AB because it has an arrow on the end. If I just drew a line here from A to B, it would just be a line segment AB, right? So as, as soon as you put an arrow on it, it becomes a vector. So I would say vector AB. Don't forget your little arrow over top. So this means a vector. So all the terminology is kind of confusing at start. If I said AB, that would be a line segment. Obviously not a vector. And if I wanted to describe this vector, I would have to give it direction. So I'd say AB is, let's say we're going to call it 500 kilometers, and then I need a direction. So when you do bearings, now you did bearings in grade 11, bearings are always measured from the north, measured from north and in a clockwise direction. Measured from north and clockwise. Okay, so north and clockwise. So if I wanted to know how far it is from here to here, let's say that was uh, probably about 50 degrees, we'd say AB is 500 kilometers north. We say the direction first, north 50 degrees east. And that would be a very nice description of your vector. Now, the other thing you should note is that the magnitude of a vector is always positive. So magnitude, I would write it like this, magnitude AB. In other words, I'm taking the absolute value of the length of the vector. So if it was going in an opposite direction, um, say this had a length of 5 and this one had a length was going in this direction with negative 5, so its magnitude would also be 5. Okay, so we never have any negative magnitudes. Okay, so let's move on to putting these on a Cartesian plane. So if I had this set up here, so I've drawn you a vector. Um, now this doesn't have a label to it, this is just the point, P, 3, 4. So I would have to give this vector a name. So let's say this is the origin. So we usually say O2P. So I could say OP is, I could call it 3, 4, and that's also a way of stating the vector, vector 3, 4. And that gives you its placement on the Cartesian plane. Whereas I could say the point, now some textbooks use square brackets for vectors and round brackets for points, but once we get into the whole, you know, just dealing with vectors, we don't really um, make a distinction between them. We know when we're talking about a vector. So P is the point, P34 is point P. So P34 is point Okay, so if I look at this vector here and I said vector OP was 3, 4, um, and let's take a look at this little green line here. This Let's call this vector A here. And going in the opposite direction, we have this little orangey-brown line here, and this could be called negative vector A. And you can see that they're both two units from the origin, so they both have a magnitude of 2. So negative vector A is equal to minus 2, 0, and the magnitude of negative vector A is 2 units. Also, we could say that a is 2, 0, and the magnitude of A is also 2. Okay, so equal vectors are vectors, they're equal if and only if AB is parallel to CD and they have the same magnitude and the same direction. That, that kind of makes sense, doesn't it? So if I had a vector going like this 
and I had another vector here. So let's say this is this is vector AB and this is vector CD. So it would have to go from C to D as well and this one has to go from A to B. Sometimes we just give them a single name but that would be so these would be equal because they have the same direction, they have the same magnitude, and they're parallel. Okay, so let's take a look at this little exercise that kind of sums up the, um, the last part of this lesson. And it's a regular hexagon. It took me a long time to draw this for you. It's really hard to draw a hexagon without a protractor to get the angles right. And the question says, state a pair of equal vectors. So equal vectors are vectors that have the same magnitude and direction and are parallel. So a pair of equal vectors could be FB and EC. So I'm going to say FB and EC. Those are equal vectors. Now you could say all kinds of them. You could say AB and ED. You could say um, B, C, and F, E, right? There's lots of equal vectors on this hexagon. This is just one of the pairs. State parallel with different magnitudes. So parallel with different magnitudes. You're looking for something um, that has a different magnitude. What has a different magnitude? So F A and E B, these are parallel. That's parallel to that one, but the magnitude of this one is probably about half of that one. So we'll say F A and E B. Give two that are equal in magnitude but opposite in direction equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. So there's lots you could say here again, but let's say what if I did FA, what would be equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. So equal in magnitude, um, these would be the same direction, but if I say it the other way around, if I said um, FA and CD, so if I went like this one, and this one, right? They're equal in magnitude, but opposite in direction. So you just have to state them in a different order. Equal in magnitude, but not parallel. Well, there's lots of those because we know if this is a regular hexagon, all these side lengths are the same length, so they have the same magnitude. Equal in magnitude, but not parallel. Let's pick um, DC and BC. There's lots to choose from, right? And different in magnitude and direction. Well, let's go from E to C. So if I said EC, what would be different in magnitude and direction? Um, how about ED? Okay, so hopefully you've got a little idea of, of how these are described. We haven't really done anything terribly fancy with them, but it is an introduction lesson, and I hope that helps you out. And I'll be able to tell by how many people like or are watching this video if you want me to keep going ahead with the vectors right now. Maybe everyone's doing calculus right now. I don't know. So I need your input, and don't forget to subscribe.